The first thing we need to do is create a new project. Set name to using RPG Maker MV. Set game title to a memorable journey and click OK. RPG Maker MV will now copy needed files to the project. When it's done, we need to access the database so we can begin setting up the game. Click System on the menu to the left. This is where the basic configuration of the entire game can be found. Let's take a moment to familiarize ourselves with this section. Starting Party is where we set which characters will be in the player party at the start of the game. RPG Maker MV only allows four visible characters in a party, so keep that in mind as you plan your stories and character introductions. Right-click on Herald and click Delete to remove the character from the list. Do the same for Therese, Marcia, and Lucius. We'll be creating our own characters, so we won't be needing the pre-made ones. Game Title is where we can rename our game if at any time we feel the need to do so. We'll leave it alone for now. Currency is where we can set what appears before the numeric value of our game's money. By default, it's G for gold, and I see no reason to change it at this time. Options is where we set up elements that have a major effect on the entire game. Before setting these, it helps to have a clear idea about how you want your game to work. Use Side View Battle makes combat work like Final Fantasy with the player party on the right side of the screen and enemies on the left. If that is the combat style you want, then check this box. By default, it is off and combat looks more like Dragon Warrior in which the player party is not seen at all and enemies are centered on the screen. For now, the default style is what I am using. Start Transparent makes it where the player party is invisible when the game first starts. Use this if your game is going to begin with a cutscene event that will play out by itself. We might do that with this game, but cutscene events will be covered in detail later, so for now we'll leave this alone. Show Player Followers makes it so that we can see the other three visible party members following the player around. Some people like to use this, and some do not. To begin with, I'm turning it off. Knockout by slip damage will make it so that hit points can drop to zero from effects such as poison. If left off, hit points will stop at one. Let's leave it like that for now. Knockout by floor damage will make it so that hit points can drop to zero from walking through environmental hazards such as poisonous swamps or floor spikes. Like with knockout by slip damage, leaving this off will stop hit point drain at one. Let's leave it off. TP, or tech points, can be built up during combat and can be used to execute special techniques. Final Fantasy used something like this for its limit break system. Display TP in battle shows how much TP each party member has built up. By default, this is turned on, and I see no reason to change that now. While RPG Maker MV only allows four visible or active party members, more than four characters can be in a party. These additional party members are called reserve members. EXP for reserve members, if turned on, will allow reserve members to take a share of experience points earned in combat. I will leave this off as I intend to avoid having reserve members in this project. RPG Maker MV allows us to set up multiple skill types such as magic. If we are using side view battles, then the SV magic skills list can include the skill types that need to use the chanting animation. With that feature turned off, this list does nothing. Music is where we can set up which pieces of music play when certain specific events occur. This is done by double-clicking an entry and selecting a music file from the list. To start listening to the selected file, click Play, and to end playback, click Stop. And there are sliders to let us control a music event's volume, pitch, and pan. When satisfied with the settings, click OK to save them. Sounds is where we can set up which sound effects play when certain specific events occur. This is handled the exact same way music is handled. Menu commands is simply where we can turn the commands that appear on the menu screen on or off. By default, they are all turned on, and we'll leave it that way. SV Attack Motions is where we can select motions that are displayed for normal attacks in side view combat mode. If that feature is not turned on, then this does nothing. 
vehicle images is where we can set the appearance of the boat, ship, and airship. We can do this by clicking on one of the vehicles and selecting the desired animation tile sheet. Click OK when done. Window color is where we can set the background color of menus and pop-up windows. Double click on the color square to edit it. Adjust the red, green, and blue sliders as desired. Click OK when done. Starting positions is where we set the locations in the game where the player, boat, ship, and airship first appear. While it can be done here, we'll be doing this while editing maps in event mode, which will be covered in another segment. Title screen is where we set the screen that displays when the game is first launched. If draw game title is checked, the name we gave the game will be rendered on the title screen. Uncheck it if you are using a custom title screen which already includes the title. For now, the default settings will be fine. We'll come back to this later.